Well, here comes Joe Biden. New polling data suggests that Joe Biden is actually making up ground against Donald Trump, who had been leading in so many of the polls for a while now. But it's actually now Biden who is winning in a number of national polls, making up some ground in the swing state polling and actually ahead in the gambling markets when it comes to the 2024 election. At this point, making this race look a lot more like a toss up rather than leaning towards Trump's direction. Now, it may be too early, of course to read too much into any of this with the election so far away. That's what this week's guest, Rachel Bittekoffer, would tell us. But we're going to take a look at the polling anyway, because at the very least, it can maybe be a retort to these narratives that Joe Biden doesn't have a chance at all at winning the election or that we have to replace him going into the convention. Let's look at the current polling. So these are the national polls we have since Joe Biden's State of the Union, which seems to be a turning point for him because uh, Republicans going into the State of the Union claimed he wouldn't even be able to get through the hour-long speech, that he would just be mumbling and stumbling over his words the entire time, and that would uh, be a huge embarrassment to the country. Well, that didn't happen, of course. Biden actually did outperform expectations, and he made Republicans look bad at a number of different moments like on the immigration issue, in my opinion. So ever since the State of the Union, we do seem to see a bit of a swing. And if you look at these average of recent polls coming to us from the Real Clear Politics website, we see that Donald Trump is up by an average of 1.1% in an average of recent polls. Now, this is a slim lead to begin with. Uh, but when you dig into it even further, one of these polls that has Trump up massively is Rasmussen. They have him up 8%. Rasmussen is not a serious pollster. And don't take my word for it. Take the RNC's word for it. They didn't accept uh, Rasmussen polling when it came to qualifications to get on the debate stage this year. And they did so because uh, they were Trump aligned or alleged to be Trump aligned. So I think we can dismiss the Rasmussen poll. And then also we have a poll that has Trump up 7%. But if you take a look at the sample size, it is only 715 likely voters and it has a relatively large margin of error. So I'm not sure we can glean too much from this poll as well. If you take one or two of these polls out, then uh, Biden would be doing a lot better and it would look even more like a toss up. So that's the national polling at this point. As you can see, a few of the polls even have Joe Biden up a little bit. So things are looking pretty good when it comes to the national polling. But of course, you can say that we don't pick the president based on the popular vote. We pick the president based on the Electoral College, and that is unfortunately the case. So now let's take a look at some of the swing state polling. We do have fewer swing state polls to work with, but Donald Trump maintains a small lead in most of them. Curiously, there's a new poll out of Pennsylvania that has Joe Biden up 10 points. It's probably an outlier. PA is probably a lot closer than that, but we can argue at this point that he's le leading Pennsylvania at least as he is Wisconsin and these uh, other states are in reach. So there is work to be done, but the trend is in the right direction. And the more we see that happen with the national polls, I think the more it'll trickle down to the swing states. And then finally, let's take a look at the betting markets. This is predicted, which isn't a scientific measure of who is the most likely to win. It's not like a projection model or anything like that. And it's not based on polling. It's simply who people are willing to put their money down on as the uh, presidential candidate most likely to win. So based on the betting at this point, Joe Biden has a 50% chance of winning the presidency, according to the prediction markets, and Trump only has a 45% chance of winning the presidency. So a clear edge to Joe Biden when it comes to this. Now, what I also think is being left out of the conversation is the criminal trials that we discussed in the earlier segment. We, of course, have a number of Trump trials coming up. The first trial is starting on April 15th. Then we have the federal documents case starting next month. And then also there's the Georgia election case at the end of the summer, early fall. We're not entirely sure about the federal 2020 election case when that's supposed to begin. But all of this is unprecedented. I mean, seeing a presidential contender go through a criminal criminal trial during a presidential campaign, that's unimaginable enough to begin with seeing four of them. 
I don't know. I don't know if we're, we're fully prepared for that. I don't know if we're fully weighing into the assessment, uh, how that's going to affect voters' minds and opinions when it comes to Donald Trump, because I'd have to imagine a whole bunch of people are going to see Trump as at least a potential criminal and thus be unwilling to vote for him. Now, the retort to that is that Trump's indictments actually helped him when it came to the Republican primary, but this is a much different electorate, the Republican primary electorate versus the general election electorate. I can see why the indictments helped Trump when it came to the Republican Party, because those are already a group of people who were poised to support him and were largely used to defending him. Some of them maybe considered, okay, we should maybe consider uh, moving on from Donald Trump, maybe go with a Ron DeSantis, maybe go with a Nikki Haley, but so many of them have just gone right back to Donald Trump and the indictments helped them do so. But that is the Republican voter base. I don't know if that's going to extend to the national voter base. It could work on some independents, sure, but I think for so many people, they're just going to see, oh, Trump is facing four criminal trials. I wasn't even aware of this, or I had minimal knowledge of this, but now I see the nonstop coverage of the trials on TV. I do think that's going to help Joe Biden. I think it's going to hurt Donald Trump. Uh, time will tell. We'll see if these trials even take place on schedule, but that is another factor that we're not even considering at this point. Too many of us are just ignoring. And then there's also the point about how we're so far out from this thing. The economy's in a relatively strong position. If the economy's also doing well six months from now ahead of the election, that suggests that Joe Biden is going to get reelected. Of course, the message is the same. It doesn't matter if Joe Biden's up 20 points in the polls or if Donald Trump is up 20 points in the polls. What do you have to do? Register to vote. Get out and vote on or before Election Day. Convince your friends and family members to register and to vote themselves. And if you want to do more than that, of course, you can donate, you can phone bank, you can canvas and do all you can to get involved because the election is a while away, but we absolutely can win this thing despite what Trump supporters and people who are fear mongering about this election will tell you.